Let's transfer our design to a piece of paper for our tentative design sheet. You'll be doing this for any clinic case that you're treatment planning. First thing we're going to do is cross off the teeth that are missing on our cast. Now, what we're going to do is place a direct retainer on our first premolar. So we're going to come through this area between the two premolars and we'll have a rest and some sluice ways right in there. And we're going to clasp the mesiofacial of our first premolar. We're going to clasp the distofacial of our second molar. So we'll be coming through this between these two molars with arms to come to the distal and we will have an embrasure rest at each position where we come through with a direct retainer arm. The reason we have an embrasure rest is so that the patient doesn't experience a feeling that the, the tooth is getting wedged apart with the metal. Now we have to have a rest next to our edentulous area. So on the maxillary arch, the canines are quite prominent on the cingulum area and we can actually cut a cingulum rest. So we have to have support next to this or near this edentulous area so we will have rest on our canines. We have to have a rest with every clasp assembly. You're going to have a direct retainer, a reciprocal component, and a minor connector. So we're going to have, in this case, an embrasure rest because we're bringing an arm between two teeth. And we want to prevent that uh, viewing of wedging. So on this particular case, then, we're going to consider doing facings. Facings are very aesthetic in the anterior area. So if we're going to do facings, we will have a guide plate on the mesial surface of the canines just behind the cusp tip. We'll have a guide plate. And the facing is drawn with a straight line across from guide plate to guide plate and then we have four F's out on the cast and um, our textbook says to use something other than our brown pencil so we'll use lead pencils on the cast to show that we're having facings. Now with the facing or with this we're going to be coming up this area it'll be going down the side of the tooth but we're going to scallop we're going to put a plating above this rest area and we're going to have to come back to this area right here so we're going to plate the first premolar we're going to go around our rest and this will become the upper border of our direct retainer on the premolar we'll come down with the lower border it comes up and circles this rest right here and we show that that is the direct retainer side by placing a little cross hatch there. Now we're going to go back. We're going to plate all these teeth at the middle third of the tooth. And we're coming through here. That will become the bottom line of our direct retainer grabbing this second molar. We'll come back here, come around here, and then we will plate that molar. So there's the top border of our major connector on that side. We'll do the same thing on the other side. We're going to plate above here. We're going to plate this premolar. We're going to come around and that becomes the top line of our direct retainer. The bottom part comes through and it goes around that rest and it becomes the plating at the middle third of the tooth. It goes up this becomes the lower border of the molar direct retainer comes through here and back like this and then we're going to cross the palate at this point if we have enough room to have a posterior bar that's at least eight millimeters and we have lat lateral bars 
we can have at least seven millimeters of metal here and then we can come forward and we'll come through the valley of the rugai and we'll open this up as much as possible for this patient give them enough tissue to touch so that's our tentative design for the um, uh, patient if we're utilizing the first premolars for aesthetics. I have drawn down below another option and the other option is again plating those second molars and drawing um, a direct retainer on the buckle of those but I thought I would draw with you if we decided we wanted to have base attachment. If we had wanted to have base attachment, we would have this guide plate that comes up the mesial surface of the canine and it would go down right in here, this area, go down this surface right here. And our base attachment is drawn by having an external finish line at the mesial lingual line angle and it comes around the arch, crosses that midline, and comes back up to the mesial lingual line angle of our um, other side, our canine. Now, we would like to have a tooth be able to sit in here that's as wide as, as our canine, our centrals and our laterals. So what I did was draw this line a little bit to the lingual, two couple of millimeters from the lingual surface so that if we set a tooth that same size in there it can be all encompassed in base attachment and then at this guide plate we're going to come back across basically just the crest of the ridge or slightly buckle to it with another um, finish line here and then included in this area we'll have some loops that are opened up where acrylic can flow through that and lock these teeth onto the denture teeth onto this framework and on this framework on the underside there will be and I should have done this in blue here there and on the underside we will have an internal finish line shown in blue and that will be on the tissue side of this framework which will create a butt joint where our acrylic will finish nicely and then that acrylic would come down to the depth of the vestibule and come back up so this blue represents acrylic with an internal finish line that's always on the major connector where the major connector joins the acrylic resin and uh, so this is our internal finish line, this is our base, this is our framework. So this is what it would look like if we decided to do base attachment. You don't have to um, place anything necessarily out there that indicates base attachment. It's when we do something other than base attachment that we would uh, note what we're doing. We'll look at one we'll look at one other design with a couple of variations from what we did before. On this one we clasp the same teeth, first premolars and second molars, but the difference is in this anterior area I did something called a reinforced acrylic pontic and this particular metal framework comes across here and there are some little metal projections that come out here the denture tooth is then cut out around this projection and then acrylic resin is flowed back into here around this metal projection and it bonds the tooth into position. The wrap, like the facing, is done for aesthetics and this little metal projection that comes out here the tooth is cut out to fit around that metal projection and then it is filled in with acrylic resin to retain it to the framework this one again is very aesthetics it makes it look like the tooth is coming out of the tissues something else that's different here 
instead of plating all the way across, all the way back, another option is available, and that is to dip down away from the tooth. Whenever you have a large area here between this rest clasp assembly and this one, you can dip down if you would like. But if you do, on the maxillary arch, you must avoid the marginal gingiva by a minimum of six millimeters. Also, this little area right through here is supposed to be a minimum of seven millimeters wide and then the posterior strap uh, eight millimeters wide. I did something different also instead of coming across back here with the metal framework I showed that you can come and actually place an arm on that tooth if you would like but if you do then you can't put plating at the same time on that tooth um, you have to again if you were to come back and even be going back farther you'd have to avoid the marginal gingiva by six millimeters if you did something like that but we don't really have a reason to do that so those are a couple of the differences in the designs with all three options shown for the maxillary arch the facing the base attachment and the wrap or the reinforced acrylic ponic